In this video, I'll show you how you can control your ESP32 or ESP266 GPIOs from anywhere in the world. This can be very useful to control a relay, a thermostat, or any other device remotely. This project is also very versatile. Through your cloud dashboard, you can easily control more outputs without uploading new code to your board. And you can even connect multiple boards to your server. In previous videos, I've covered how to save sensor readings to a database, display them on a table, charts, and gauges that you can use to visualize from anywhere using your own server. Now, I've created this new project where you can create buttons in a dashboard and assign them to a board and GPIO number. Then, you can use the toggle switches to control the ESP outputs from anywhere. There are many ways of controlling outputs from anywhere. And even though this is a working solution, there are other methods that provide a two-way communication with your devices. I also recommend that you take this project and add more features to fit your own needs. Here's a high-level overview of this project. You have a web page running a PHP script with some toggle buttons that allow you to control the outputs on and off. When you press the buttons, it updates the output state and saves it in your database. You can add more buttons or delete them from your dashboard. Then, you can have an ESP32 or ESP266 or even multiple boards that make an HTTP request every X number of seconds to your server. Finally, according to the result of that HTTP GET request, it updates the ESP GPIOs accordingly. For this project, I recommend using Bluehost as your hosting provider. Bluehost has cPanel and comes with all the features required for this project, but you can use any other hosting service that offers PHP and MySQL. If you don't have a hosting account, I would appreciate if you sign up for Bluehost using my link, which doesn't cost you anything extra and helps support my work. You can find the link below this video. After signing up for a hosting account and setting up a domain name, you can log in to your cPanel or similar dashboard. Create your database, username and password. Run an SQL query to create your tables. You'll also need a couple of PHP scripts that you can download for free on my blog. Just open the companion blog post that has all the step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots on how to create a dashboard with the PHP scripts. After that, upload the code to your ESP32 or ESP266 boards. This project is compatible with any development board that has an ESP32 or ESP266 chip. You just need to assemble a simple circuit and upload the sketches provided. For this example, we'll use an ESP32 board with three LEDs and an ESP266 with two LEDs. Follow this schematic for the ESP32 and this one for the ESP266. Instead of LEDs, you can connect a relay module or any other device to the ESP GPIOs. We'll program the ESP32 and ESP266 using Arduino IDE. So, make sure you have these boards installed. Copy this code to your Arduino IDE. You need to make some changes to make it work for you. Add your network credentials, SSID and password. Type your domain name so the ESP makes the HTTP GET request to your server and retrieves the correct output states. Finally, you need to type the number that identifies your board. For this demonstration, this will be board number 1, so I've typed 1 in this board ID parameter. If you have another board to connect to your server, you should name it number 2 and so on. In fact, your board just needs to have a unique ID that is the same as your board ID defined in the cloud dashboard. Once it's ready, upload the sketch to your ESP. Then, open the Arduino IDE serial monitor to see if your board is connected to your server successfully. Now, you can prepare the code for your ESP266. Just enter the SSID and password, the main name, and board ID. In this case, it's number 2. Open a browser and type the domain name followed by esp-outputs.php. You should see this web page with your default button. The default button is called built-in LED. It's assigned to board 1 
and controls GPIO 2. If you press the button, within a few seconds your board will change the GPIO 2 state. As you can see, it works as expected. You can add more outputs to your project. Type a name, set the board ID to number 1, and type the desired GPIO that you want to control. Create another button for board 1. Then, add two buttons for board 2. At any point in time, you can use the delete button to remove buttons from your dashboard, or use the form at the bottom to create more. Note, in some devices you might need to refresh the page to see your newly created buttons or to remove the deleted buttons. Finally, there's a section that shows the last time a board made a request and updated its outputs. Since this is not a two-way communication, when you press the buttons to control your outputs, your board doesn't update the outputs instantly. It will take a few seconds for your ESP board to make a new HTTP GET request and update its output states. With this last request time, you can see when that happened. Just refresh the page to see the updated values. Now you know that your boards were updated just a few seconds ago. There are many other features that you can add to your server. You could merge it with our previous projects to display sensor readings. Feel free to add more ESP boards to run simultaneously and define other outputs to control. That's it. I hope you found this project interesting. For the complete step-by-step -step instructions, click the first link in the video description. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to watch my next ESP projects.